Hi everyone, welcome back to lesson two of our six part series about finding your purpose in life. As you know, we're focusing on the six ways that will help you know and complete your life mission, which is based on how you've been wired by God. Now, before we jump into the three topics, I want to remind you that God has a very distinctive plan for your life. Ephesians 5.17 says, Don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. And before you begin to think that that verse doesn't apply to you, listen to this verse from the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah was a teenager when the Lord said to him, Don't say, I'm too young, for you must go wherever I send you and say whatever I tell you. God wants to use you now. We've all been uniquely wired for a life mission and a life message from before the time we were born, from even before the world began. In this lesson, we're looking at how to rethink my motives, to rethink my relationships, and really use your time wisely, all of which will help determine whether or not you'll be successful in the completion of your distinct life mission. Really, if you rethink those three aspects of who you are, your motives, your relationships, and how you use your time, you're better prepared to answer God's call on your life. So first, let's talk about examining our motives and all that we do. The insight in this section will help you learn to be more authentic in everyday life and in your kingdom work. And by motives, I mean the reason that you do something, the reason that you don't do something. Uh, let me give you an example. Um, ha have you ever uh, given a gift just so that someone will give you a gift in return? Have you ever maybe offered a prayer request for a friend and that was really kind of a way of gossiping about it? Or have you ever shown up just fashionably late, just, just late enough so people will notice and you can savor that extra attention? Now, it's okay to hide certain things. Like when I, as the gift of masculinity that I am, wear makeup to disguise the zits on my face. I mean, that's, that's probably okay, but let's face it. All cover-ups create an illusion. They purposefully deceive people, and the cover-up is simply an outward appearance that creates a better payoff than the truth will pay. What I'm challenging you to do is to be ready to begin to live a more real life by thoroughly understanding your motives and your reasons for doing things or not doing them. I'm asking you this because God is everywhere present and all-knowing. In fact, the Bible tells us that God examines every heart and sees through every motive in the book of 1 Chronicles. Psalm 26, the psalmist says, Put me on trial, Lord, and cross-examine me. Test my motives and my heart. I want to give you a couple of key ideas to make sure that your motives are correct. Here's the first thing. God um, hates wrong motives. Now, we've all said, you know, I'm sorry, just so that we'd feel better and we're not so guilty and but the motive there might be something we can't trust. Or perhaps you've given money to a cause, like to fund wells in Africa or to give in an offering, but you did that just so you can brag about how generous you are. Maybe you've attended an event just to be seen with the right people. Well, we like to disguise our motives, but God is an expert at spotting these self-serving motives that may appear innocent to others. He sees right through to our heart and he doesn't miss a thing. In Matthew 23, God calls the Pharisees hypocrites because their motive was to appear to be holy. Now, I wish this wasn't true, but I sometimes try to appear holy too, but really inside I'm full of hypocrisy. If you're honest, what about you? What's one motive that you have for something that you do, like even serving in a ministry? Or has a poor motive like jealousy or anger ever led you to another sin like theft or abuse or lying? See, the secrets and the false motives, they destroy us and they lead to, to other and maybe even deeper sins. The key idea, the second one, is that pure and right motives always give glory to God. So let's test out that theory with a few examples. What's your motive for taking someone to the homecoming dance? If your motive is because he's the hottest or most popular dude in the school, then you might have the wrong motives. If your motive instead for dating that person is to continue your search for a Christ-like mate that you would someday marry, then you're on the right track. Well, let's try another one. What's your motive for giving a speech about recycling? 
If your motive is to save the planet, well, that's a great motive, but it's very secular, and really that's called humanism, meaning we do good things for human beings because we want to be perceived as a good person. But what if your motive instead was that that giving that speech would honor your commitment to God as a steward of creation, and then you're on the right track. Now, just to be clear, great motives that indicate you're a good and decent human being are awesome motives, but they aren't the best. Really, spiritually speaking, they just don't pass the test of doing it for God, which is the ultimate test of your motives. The key idea number three is that your motives impact your life mission. What if you begged God with this prayer? God, will you please tell me my grand purpose in life? I promise I'll work really hard on it. And if your motive for asking for that is curiosity, then once he finally reveals his plan to you, your curiosity is satisfied, your excitement dies down, and you won't follow through the hard work of completing the mission that he crafted for you before the world began. Your true motive was selfish. It was to feel the thrill of discovering God's plan, and instead it should be to answer the call of God on your life. But here's my warning. We don't want to be careless about our motives. We can be thankful for what God wants to help each of us become honest and authentic people. We want to be entrusted with this challenging life mission. Well, the next thing that we want to look at is relationships. And really, individual relationships impact your life in a positive or in a negative manner. Um, God has designed you to enjoy relationships that will help you grow spiritually and that will help you discover and complete the task for which you've been called. You're expected to weed out the negative and the poor, the bad relationships that are hindering you from your life mission because they damage your credibility as a person who's doing God's work. For the exercise in this topic, you're going to think about how different relationships are enhancing or sabotaging your character development and your assignment from God. I don't want you to name names or even, you know, look at the person across the room, none of that. But I want you to use a code to kind of categorize people. It may be uh, if they're a blessing to you, if they're a positive influence, write a little plus sign. Or if they're a negative influence, maybe it's a, a negative sign that you'd write off by their name. Or, or neutral is that they don't really have an effect on me either way. Come up with your own symbol for that one. I don't know. Anyhow, <laughs> this will allow you to think through your relationships. For example, with your, your best friend, with your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your coach, your mom or dad, or that significant adult in your life, maybe a grandparent we want to evaluate all of them in light of God's call on your life. The last section in this lesson is that we want to look at the use of your time. Your calendar reflects your priorities, your most important daily commitments, but does it reflect priorities that will outlive you, that will be here long after you're gone? At the same time, is your time prioritized enough to sit quietly, and long enough to hear God's still small voice regarding the destiny that he has for you. In the use of your time exercise on your life map, you'll be challenged to find just 12 extra minutes in your current 24 hour day to be used solely to focus on your life purpose. You know, what if you were to steal a few minutes that could make a difference in your entire life? Well, let me ask you, where would you steal them from? Would you steal it from hobbies or shopping or going to the movies or killing time on Facebook? You know who you are. Um, all the things that do that, that really we waste those precious moments that could change who we will become. Now, I stole from homework time when I was in high school, but that could also explain my SAT scores, so don't do that. Do your homework. All right, good for you. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe it's not just two minutes. Maybe it's four minutes. And you would brainstorm each day a little bit about your life purpose. Could you take a, a little sliver of time from video games? Maybe sports, maybe looking at your phone and even just staring at your beautiful self in the mirror. Where, where could you steal a little bit of time? I think you can do it. If someone you trusted more than anybody else in the world told you that to find true and lasting significance, you need to rethink some of your motives, some of your relationships, and some of the ways that we waste our time, would you take their advice? Will you, in preparation for your life's assignment, be open to the insight that you'll gain from these exercises and the time you'll spend in conversation? I pray that you will invest in your future by doing whatever it takes 
to be better prepared to answer God's call on your life. All right, time for that conversation. See you next week.